Hello, nerds, and welcome. We are Crossing the Nerdverse, bringing you yet another episode. This week, I am joined by James and Eric. Uh, we are without Ryan, sadly, as he's dealing with a family situation, so we're hoping all the best for him, uh, and that it's not too major of a situation. But we will be continuing our foray into horror, which is the theme for October. Uh, two topics tonight. First one is one that I'm super excited about, and that's horror monsters and elements in uh, RPGs, whether they're tabletop or uh, video games, specifically honing in on the RPG aspect of them. Second topic, we're going to talk about the science of scare, which I have some fun little science facts to drop in on that one. Thanks to my neuroscience PhD having wife, she gave me a rundown of how the brain functions during scares. But before that, we're going to jump into current events. I believe, James, you had a couple you wanted to cover. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, the first thing, and Ryan's going to, obviously, I told him earlier, uh, and I'm sure he's very excited about it. But uh, like I said, David Trottenberg just uh, announced that there are two new Predator movies coming next year, which is pretty cool. Pretty excited about that. He's the uh, the guy that did Prey, the most recent Predator movie, which... Uh, honestly, let's, uh, it's probably one of the better ones that's been made since the, the first couple. So I rented it on Amazon with the intention of watching it and never did. Um, but the premise of it seemed absolutely amazing compared to like the other bog standard Predator movies that we had been getting. I actually really like the Adrian Brody one. The one where they get parachuted in and they drop the down. Race. Yes. I actually that Topher that's Grace just, was in a Predator movie. That's, yeah, yeah was. that's why. Oh, and he and he was a badass. Like just it watch wasn't. it, and you'll see. It was. You'll good. see. But but like honestly, I thought that one was really. I thought that one was really good. That was my second say, favorite. I would say it was entertaining. I don't think it was good. Yeah, but I was like Bones is giving that one a pretty hearty like no shake on that one. I may skip it, man. Like that may be one I avoid. Uh, it's free but, somewhere. Actually, so uh, and also like kind of pivot off of that so predator badlands is the one that we've known about for a while and so he, he announced there's actually another one that he's making as well uh coming next year and predator badlands is taking the spot of the blade movie which was which, you know removed from marvel or from disney's release schedule and i said like replaced with the new uh predator we, badlands i am a little sad about that i was getting pretty hyped for a new blade movie really i was on not again and again and again yeah it it just feels like it's going to be a lot of stop and start with that film, which is a heartbreaking because I love the character Blade. He's super dope in the comics. And honestly, the Wesley Snipes Blade movies were pretty good. I mean, they yeah, did a good yeah. job keeping Marvel afloat. Two two of them were pretty good. The first and the third one, right? Two of them were pretty good. <laughs> Everybody, I loved Ryan Reynolds' character. Uh, I also really... I really did enjoy Triple H as the big one. <laughs> I was going to say. had the vampire Pomeranian. Uh, but there were definitely some aspects of three that were not super duper. The main bad guy was pretty awful. They uh, they went they went too hard on the uh, CGI in there in the third one too. Yeah, I feel like I mean you had a good enough cast of very athletic people. You didn't have to lean too much into the CGI. You could have just had it, it, the physical it was actors the time, be physical. So, you know, it, it was the time. Like that's just how they were doing films. But it, it definitely it was, was the style. It was incorrect. It was a dark period of cinematic history. It was dark times. Thank goodness we've pulled ourselves up yeah. back into the light. Uh, uh, Eric, did you have any current events you wanted to go over? Okay, so there there is a big one, but I want to do something bigger with it, and I keep meaning to do um, some day things to hit up. Let me see if I can find it super fast. So Steam, new thing now where you're not buying games anymore. You're buying licenses. Um, and this kind of ties into the big topic we had in regards to uh, what the EU is going to be trying to do with you have to have a game forever. Um, so this is definitely going to be a way to get around something like that. And I'm waiting to see what Sony, Microsoft, and everyone else is going to do with it. Um, so that I thought that was probably the biggest thing I've seen in a long time in like video games. Yeah, I mean, changing it from, I guess, essentially... Uh the purchasing of a game to a software license really feels like a step to circumnavigate owning a game. That's going to, going to get wild. I mean, yeah, they're, we'll just, they're just, they're just coming out and saying it, but it's already been true. Yeah. Like it's already what we are doing when we buy a digital game. They're just it's, saying it now. Yeah. They're giving its own 
direct definition. No more beating around the bush. Well, I think it'll get them around that EU thing is the big thing now. It's like actually coming out and saying that is how they're going to get around that. Because if I'm not mistaken, the EU thing says games, not licenses. Um, so I think that's how Steam's trying to beat that. With that, we'll move over to my current events. Both of mine are in pro wrestling. We'll start with the, uh, we'll start with, I guess, the good news first. Uh, and that is Adam Cole is returning from injury again. This makes uh, return number three in three years Jesus. from being injured. Yeah, he's had a rough run of luck. I actually had to have a uh, like cadaver bone transplant. What to f- he wrecked his ankle. Um, so they had to bring in like a whole compatible like bone system um, from a donor to fix his foot. From a dead donor? I, I have no idea. It just said cadaver transplant. I didn't look up what that means, but I do know what cadaver means. So this maybe, open, I don't know. Kayfabe uh, is going to get nuts with him from now on. Yeah, he's going to be kicking somebody with another dude's foot. It's uh, Shawn Michaels' foot. He's still alive. <laughs> like He manages NXT. Shawn Michaels isn't dead. He just he looks a little rough. Um <laughs> Uh, the other, I guess, good news, uh, which I guess is also good news, uh, is Vince McMahon is subject to yet another lawsuit for past shady behavior. Uh, this one brought about by either ignoring or attempting to cover up the uh, Ring Boy incident with Mel Phillips. We'll see where that lawsuit goes. This has already been litigated once, um, which means I think his lawyers have a pretty solid argument to get this lawsuit thrown out because he was previously investigated for this. So like, I get that this is a civil lawsuit as opposed to a legal one. So we'll see where it goes. But again, he's got a pretty, like from a legal standpoint, has a solid foundation to combat this one, at least for a long time or long enough to settle it out of court. Or he'll just, Um, yeah, settle out of court. That's probably what will happen. Yeah, I have a feeling it's probably what's going to go down. He's got to um, be running out of money from all this, though. Not even close. Like, not even a little bit. That uh, TKO buyout from Endeavor would have set the three of us up, our children, our children's children, and various friends and family members for life. Uh, he made a boatload from the WWE. He's not at risk of being in the poorhouse anytime soon. So... We'll see where the legislation goes on that. I still no update on the other like lawsuits and federal investigations, which has kind of been burning at me because I really would like to get a status update on those. One day, uh, yeah, due process has to take take its course, but this is a just a phenomenal amount of lawsuits for him to be facing to not be culpable of anything. You know what I mean? Eh, I, there's not a lot of left of good of goodwill towards Vince McMahon anywhere at this point. I don't think. I will say thank you for the attitude era. That's, that's all I got. I mean, you can you can also give a big shout out and thank you to uh, to Paul Heyman for that too, uh, who was pretty instrumental in all of that. Uh, just so everyone knows, Eric Bischoff is the best be a GM mode in WWE 2K24. Oh, okay. Just I so everybody say he knows, was the best GM, and I was like, no, WCW proves that he was not great. <laughs> oh yeah, I definitely don't pick WCW has this thing when I pick Eric Bischoff. Um, I definitely pick Raw. That's my show. Um, but I definitely go with Bischoff. By the way, if you haven't played 2K24 yet, I know we're, we're I'm getting totally off track, but it's only for one second. You must play the be a GM mode. Total non-believer in wrestling games. Like I'll play them once it, in a blue moon, but like that fucking be a GM mode, like on point, man. It's up there to me with like be a be a GM mode in like Madden or NHL or any of that shit. It's actually definitely- harder. It was definitely one of the like most requested things to bring back because it's actually been missing from several iterations of the WWE 2K games. Uh, they got they scrapped it entirely for a while and have recently just brought it back. They must have because I don't remember ever seeing it before. And like I'm gonna tell you, if you're one of those people that wants to build your own shit like I do in every sports game, it's by they, far the best be a GM mode. They had a lot of the old school ones, specifically like the Raw versus SmackDown. But that's getting into the history of video games. And that's not tonight's topic. We're going to start off with with topic one, the one I'm excited about, and that's uh, horror monsters and elements in RPGs, uh, either video game or tabletop, which 
my favorite is going to be the Witcher series, which is just chock full of pretty much every fantastical element from horror and, you know, just fantasy in general. Yeah, and that's actually both, too, because there's a Witcher TTRPG as well. So Yeah, it, that does covers both sides. I mean, specifically, like, the monsters of it, you know, you have the... The golems, which is your reference directly to like Frankenstein and things like that. Uh, well, I mean, have... Gole- golems have specifically like a lot of cultural relevance to to Jewish culture uh, prior to even Frankenstein. So I guess that is true. I only learned that because of Supernatural. And then you have all the fun like uh, <laughs> pagan and Wiccan uh, creatures, like fantastical creatures, the Leshen being one of my favorites which is the spirit of the the angry spirit of the forest yeah, which is good found this uh, really interesting document where somebody went through all of the monsters of D&D and where they come from whether or not they were like originally printed by uh, like Watsi original Watsi uh, mm-hmm. you know or if or if they were inspired by uh, some kind of mythological creature or something like that it's pretty interesting it's like a 16 page document yeah i mean that's a that's definitely a deep dive yeah Um, some people got all the time (laughs) yeah i my one of my favorite things is how uh specifically in rpgs how fairies are depicted some of them have them as these very like benevolent and kind fantastical creatures and then some of them have them as like the uh like the she style fae where you know, don't do deals with them. Don't eat any yeah. of their food. You know, watch your watch what you say. You know, uh, around them, which is definitely like a cool element because that definitely gets into the horror side of like the veil or the he- what do they call it? The hedge. Yeah, the hedge and uh, changelings and fucking yeah. Oh, oh you're. I, I missed it. You must have mentioned World of Darkness. I missed it. No, we haven't. But I mean, that is I, actually well, yeah. like that is a classic. Like that is a classic horror. RPG, yeah, like 100%. vampires, werewolves, changeling, even Promethean and demon. Even though demon went like a really weird way, that demon kind of went weird. <laughs> but, I mean, I like Dude. it, but it, it's not like your traditional like angels and demons machine the, world and shit. Uh, yeah, it, uh, it, it was amazing. The best thing, the best thing they ever did too is they actually made the apocalypse happen, like in their books. Like if you read them. Like, they actually brought about the thing that they talked about so much when the game came out, and they played through the whole thing. Like, you could even do it in the tabletop. Like, it was so they good. have some sweet comic books. Uh, I yeah. have from the Do they really? Recent. Yeah. Oh, yeah. World of Darkness has all kinds of stuff. Like, there's novelizations. There's comic books. You know, there's, of course, the game. It's hard to get their novels now, especially their originals. Just, like, I'm very actually... upset that I don't have any. I used to I have, have all a of them. few back here, but uh, well, all I, of I don't them have seems, a single one. I had all, all of them seems crazy because there's a freaking ton of them. Yeah, I had a lot of them on uh, on a hard drive, uh, one of my deployment hard drives that's in a storage box somewhere in my house, loaded uh, with viruses. I'm sure it was, <laughs> but I had you know, I probably had over a thousand books downloaded onto that thing. Uh, because that was one of my... I'm not going to say there was not movies and TV shows and other <laughs> forms of entertainment on there, but I did have, like, a couple of thousand novels that I had saved on one of those hard drives. I'll have to dig it out and plug it into somebody else's computer. I'm not going to plug it into my <laughs> gaming one. I don't know. If I... No, I found my old deployment one. I just, I just like... Got him, you know, magnetized it and like threw it out. I was like, I don't even want to know what's on that thing. I was like, there could have been Bitcoin from one of the times I was drunk. I didn't care. There was probably a world ending virus on that thing, just about ready to fucking blow. I was like, nope. You know, a lot uh, of lime wire content. <laughs> How old were you when you deployed? <laughs> like, what year was that? <laughs> lime wire? Good God. Uh, speaking also of uh, World of Darkness. Besides, uh, you know, tabletop RPG, like the game um, Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines, one of the best RPGs. Like, it is so good. Do you think so? Let's see. I really yeah, like the yeah. first one. That's what I'm saying. Oh. Uh, there's, that's, there, there is only one. There's, no, there's more than one. Nope, there's one. There's a second one that has not come out yet. It's coming out soon. After being in development hell for like 20 fucking years. Yeah, which tells me that it's going to be in great condition when it comes out. Every time they're like, we delayed this game again. I was like, oh, what's up, Skull and Bones? 
Hey, <laughs> nobody can make a game that bad. It's Let's just, be totally honest here. Nobody's made a game that bad yet. <laughs> yeah, the problem with uh, Bloodlines 2, and specifically, uh, Eric, I believe there are other Vampire Masks. Then there's a... Uh, a Not those game. weird ones battle, there's a battle with royale, the storyline. But there is only one royale. Bloodlines. Yeah, there's Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines. Oh, yeah, Bloodlines okay. Two. Yeah, there's only one Bloodline. There was a story, there's an RPG one before Bloodlines. But that Bloodlines, was, the storyline like, was good, but like the gameplay was fucking miserable because it's so old. Like, it was bad. But it was, the storyline was fucking great. And the way they jumped around. Bloodlines, I, I kind of liked it, but it was all right. Yeah. So, I mean, I know we, I know I mentioned The Witcher, but what's some other good RPGs that have all those fun horror elements in them? I guess I, we're going to have to include Fallout, because Fallout does have, in fact, like zombies and other. Oh, yeah. It's, it's, uh, an evil, it's definitely Resident an RPG. Evil games. I mean, those, they're, they're, do those count as RPGs? Do you have a skill to yeah, list? Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, uh, the, didn't some of the older I, ones or new, I, I, newer I think ones? I call, I mean. I'd call them probably like action RPGs or something like that. You know, but yeah, I think I feel like they're not, it's the not traditional quite a like shoot. Yeah, they're not. They're not necessarily like a traditional like uh, like say like leveling system kind of RPG. But you do get better. You you have an inventory you to manage all that kind of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Like I said, I'm trying to think of any like RPG that I've played that does not have some aspect or at least reference to Diablo. like your popular horror genres, which is all horror. Like yep. it's all, <laughs> and that's the whole our, theme of that uh, game. Yeah. Doom. <laughs> Again, yeah. Like, well, that was the one I mentioned. Like first horror game I played was Doom. Demons uh, and devils and stuff popping up on Mars. People always forget Parasite Eve. Yeah, Parasite Eve. Yep, that's Parasite a good one. Eve. I don't think I played that one. It's not that's a world, game. though. Like, it, like when you're looking at, like, the big worlds, like, we've been talking about, like, Witcher and World of Darkness and things like that. Like, Parasite Eve was a very small time frame. Like, two games came out in the span of, like, four or five years. I don't think they've done anything with it since. I think it'd be an interesting world to continue. Yeah. But they haven't done shit with it since. I'm, I'm still struggling to think of, of any RPG that does not have a horror aspect in it at all. I mean, you. I mean, you. You could find something in, 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 in pretty much. I feel like all of them at some point because, like, there I is just deep enough, yeah. so much like inspiration from mythology uh, that you know something's been just become very common. Vampires, zombies, werewolves, yeah. all that stuff's like very common. Um, maybe like uh, Final Fantasy. Maybe some of those like vampire. There's vampires in Final yeah. Fantasy. Yeah, but I mean, original like, Power Rangers. <laughs> I don't know if that was. I don't know if that counts as an RPG. There's a witch. There's a witch. Rita Repulsa. There's oh, a witch. Man. Yeah, that's true. And the fucking guy that's just fucking exposed muscle is also terrifying. Yeah, Lord the Zed. Out, like dog. Yeah, Lord Zed. That's what it was. I was like, well, then you have the big werewolf dog looking dude yeah. that also okay, sort yeah. of looks like a sphinx. Dude, that is really hard when you sit and think about it. And like, usually they don't have small parts either. Because like, even when you mention Final Fantasy. Like, especially Seven had Vincent. Like, there was yeah. a lot of, like, horror-style elements to it. Like, any really good role-playing game that you think of, I think, would have a, a solid hook for a horror-slash, like, I don't know, undead-style thing to it. Like, I can't think... Yeah, I really can't think of it. Like, you have to get into, like, the really cheesy kids things. Like, isn't there, like, a Cats one that's out? Kirby! Or, like, Bang on Balls. To me, um, Kirby is terrifying. Also not an RPG. But Kirby, like, by himself is terrifying. He's a piece of chewed bubblegum that runs around and, like, inhales people. That's terrifying. Like, Can you imagine if he inhaled people like Jason or Freddy? Would he suddenly get the urge? <laughs> he, he, becomes would, he would be round with a hockey mask and a kitchen knife. Like, he becomes less threatening, I feel like, when he does and that. And then he can't die. <laughs> I, I feel like he already can't die. Yeah. Like, I, don't, I still don't know what Kirby is. <laughs> like, um, I'm trying to think. Oh, you know another another uh, like really pretty pretty good one um, that's come out recently is the Elden Ring and all the kind of the the, the Soulsborne's games like they're they're all yeah. very horror esque like horror inspired by uh, you know bear, all kinds of cultural references in there in all of them mm -hmm. uh, and have been they do, very God, they great do a good games. job of of finding very very obscure mythologies yeah. to reference in their games. Uh, which is honestly my favorite thing about both Dark Souls and Elden Ring is like reading through the playthroughs and seeing if I can identify where they brought some of these creatures in from. Because I'm terrible at the games. Like I get no enjoyment from playing them. Uh, but the worlds around get them are better. fascinating. 
I, yeah, I'm just a trash player. Some, like when I play video games, like I want to be challenged to a point, but I don't want to be challenged so yeah. much that I get frustrated. You know, like I'm trying to have a good time. Fight the same boss for four hours. Yeah, life's hard enough I, as it is. Day. I don't need to come home. <laughs> like I don't need to come home and have another big unsurmountable challenge. Well, that's that's why I love video games that let you like change the difficulty all the time. Like when I played yeah. the most recent Star Wars Survivor, that was an upside to it, which also has a lot of horror elements to it. Um, Star Wars is full of them. Yeah. Like, when you play that game, like, you can change the difficulty. So, like, I loved playing it on the highest difficulty. But, unfortunately, there was one boss I couldn't beat on it. So, was I it lowered it. Nah, it was some dude in the fucking... I can't think. You had to, like, jump around in the sky to get to the motherfucker. Anyways, I could never beat him. I tried for, like, literally days before I gave up. Um, uh, speaking of RPGs, but... this actually... Pops into current events. We are six days, seven days away uh, as of recording for a new Dragon Age game, which is also going to be chock full of horror elements, as they always are. Uh, Dragon Age the Veil Guard coming out on the 31st. So how Should be good. They, they must have synced it because there'll be some sort of very like horror-ish element to it compared to usual. I mean, it usually I mean, is. Every one of the but... like every one of the Dragon Age games has had that element of darkness. Like they are a very grim, dark setting, despite what some people want to think. Uh, yeah. Specifically, <laughs> haters online, they're like, "I don't understand why this game's going so grim, dark." And I'm like, "Did you not play the subsequent three? Like, it's. it's I think it's funny because I think it's like uh, the visuals aren't necessarily as grim, dark. Like the story is right. Yeah. But but when you're playing the game, it doesn't. It just feels kind of like an action RPG, right? Yeah, Especially right. the first one's know. very bright. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, like the grace is it gray skulls? Like, what are they? Like, I know I'm thinking He Man, but like <laughs> the gray something, gray wardens, gray wardens. The, gray wardens, the yeah. fucking storyline to them is incredible. It's the whole reason I played the game. Like, I didn't even yeah. care about the rest of it. I was like, that is one of the best storylines I've ever read for like a fucking class of character. Like, you will die slowly over time. Like, witchers are kind of close, I guess. Now, witchers are. But, virtually immortal yeah. until they get so old that some some monster finally takes them out. They do not have a great future either. But <laughs> similar to Space Marines, not like long term, not looking good for you. Like death is your reward. Oh, totally. <laughs> unless awesome. they get unless they get to you on the battlefield fast enough and you become a dreadnought, which to me is just basically so being worried. buried that's, alive. That's, that's I terrible. wish the VA. Where are you, VA? Absolutely and, not. Absolutely not. Put, do oh. not put me on the. Do not put me on the dreadnought list. Did you? Uh, did you uh, ever read the story with the dreadnought that was haunted? No, no but I am going to now. Yeah, yeah. So there is a marine who like would he like took uh, something from another. I believe it was another like marine, like a piece of like his armor or something like that, like something from him when he died. And then uh, this Marine goes on to fight and, and gets killed. And then, but they like, you know, put him into a dreadnought armor. And like, as soon as he does, the spirit's like, I've been waiting, biding my time. And it's like the fucking ghost of this other fucking Marine that died that he took the thing from. <laughs> Good Lord. God, that would be awful. <laughs> sounds Just like Warhammer. In eternity with a dude that wants to be spiteful. Yeah, that's, yeah, that sounds like Warhammer. Yeah. yeah Again, does. chock full of horror elements as well. They have an entire chapter dedicated to vampirism. Yeah. Blood angels looking your way, and I mean the night lords <laughs> fucking just literally terror. That's they're a bit Batman. Like, <laughs> okay, so let's name <laughs> let's name a smaller. Each one of us has to name a smaller, more unknown horror style world, like something people don't think of. Anybody Ugh. got anything? That was some silence because I'm trying to think of one at the moment. I'm trying to think of one that's not well known. Yeah, I mean, uh, do you, do you like in video games or in TTRPGs or do you in everything, movies, everything, just a setting that's just not that well known that people should check out. Like I, I personally, I'm I'm really trying to think of something that's horror. I'm not a big horror buff. I'm kind of learning I, as the months gone on. I think probably one of the ones that I enjoyed the most that's not wildly, it's not unknown, and it's not. Yeah, it's from a pretty popular printer, but the uh, Deadlands was it Reloaded? Oh yeah, Dan, Dan, oh, just De Deadlands, and, and then there's like the uh, Reloaded is just the updated rules version, basically. Updated rules, so Deadlands, um, yeah, TTRPG, uh, like Western horror, yeah, Wild West horror, post or not post, but pre-apocalyptic, and it's it's got a lot of horror elements in it. Probably has one of the greatest 
perks that you could possibly get, and that's the Denier, which makes for a fun RPG, like RP element to that game, where you just try to explain away all the supernatural stuff you keep running into. That is that a solid. Good. That is a solid. I love. I mean, I love. You know, you already know. I love that that RPG. I oh, actually it's have. So good. Uh, I have not. I don't have the Deadlands uh, Reloaded here, but I do have Hell on Earth, which is kind of the sequel. That's the post-apocalypse version of Deadlands. Yep. I have the uh, books actually just right over here on my on my wall. Man, Bones, is... Bones played a preacher in that one, inspired by Preacher, which again, great comic series. We talked about yep. that on the uh, on horror comics. Yeah, I've that one. That's, that's definitely one I would have brought up yeah, as well. I, yeah, you blew up the comic book side of that. I I tried to do you proud by bringing up like Preacher and Helsing and all of those. I, I'm just not the biggest horror, but I've never been. I try. So what TTRPG were you thinking, Eric? So, like, I don't have one in particular, like, to be totally honest. I realistically just wanted you two to name one and then talk about it for a long time because, you know, it's just trying it to happen. Like, right, I because think, I just wanted to do that, yeah. The uh, uh, thing that I would bring up, and I talked to Travis about this earlier, is uh, there's a TTRPG called Basin, which is a horror, it's, it's, it's strictly horror RPG based off uh, Norse mythology. Uh, I have not got to play it with anybody yet, but I think I, like it sounds freaking awesome. I would love to play that one. Um, I like the whole Norse mythology thing. I know Travis does as well. Oh yeah, but... and I think it'd be cool to play like a horror game in that. And I've heard pretty good things about it from people who have played it. That maybe that maybe the next in betweener game when we're down a person. I have yeah, to it, run one. It does exist on uh, some of the uh, virtual tabletops, so. We could definitely do that. Oh, for sure. But I think that wraps us up on uh, on RPGs, unless Bones has another one he wants to add. I uh, can't really think of anything else. I mean, I love I love horror in 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 comics. It's like places that you don't expect it. Like there's a lot of horror in Marvel comics. It's like a lot. Yeah. It's kind of like lighter, but it's like nice, like the Blade, the Midnight Suns, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, it's been fun, and recently we like just Werewolf had the by uh, Night and... Werewolf by Night is a good one, uh, and then they, they recently just did a storyline for uh, called Blood Hunt, where Blade is possessed by this like uh, elder like vampire god dude, and and yeah, they try to like take over uh, the earth or whatever, you know, pretty pretty standard in that in that kind of thing. But they did do something really cool. There's um I can't remember what they're called, but it's like a little like coven of vampires in it that are like mm-hmm. the bad guys and they're all like really weird vampires like one's like uh you don't drink they don't drink no, like i think one of them actually drinks blood the rest of them are like just different shit like one of them drinks fucking magic like in any form so um I, speaking of that like a fun twist and take on vampires if you haven't read the dresden files uh they divide those up into different courts so there's the black court the red court the white court and I think there was one other. I can't remember right now off the top of I my think head. Only three. I, I think there's only three. Was it only three? I think so. Um, so the Red Court is your standard, like, Dracula blood drinkers, can't go out in daylight, vampires. And then you have the Black Court, which is your... Uh, Nosferatu Dracula. Nosferatu came back from the dead vampire. Uh, they also consume... They consume your soul. Uh so when they feed off of you, they may drink your blood, but they're also consuming like your physical soul uh, well-being. And then you have the white court, which is a vampire that feeds off of your emotions, whether, you know, whatever strong emotion you're experiencing, whether that's lust, love, rage, whatever. Uh, they're experts at emotionally manipulating people and then feeding off of them that way, which is, again, a super dope take on the different types of vampires. Yeah, you know, I think that's actually uh, worth mentioning, too, just the Dresden Files as a, as a whole. Like I, I think I mostly think of it as like fantasy, but it like is largely horror as well. It, yeah, it's all horror based. I mean, uh, there's an entire short story series of called "Working for Bigfoot," um, <laughs> where he helps the Sasquatches. You know, uh, it's got angels, it's got devils, it's got uh, the dark fae. You know, the ones you're not supposed to make deals with. Um, Honestly, one of my favorite books is the one where he's fighting against the three Billy Goats Gruff. Uh, probably oh, yeah, yeah, one yeah, of the yeah. best <laughs> novels in that series. But yeah, 
So yeah, Dresden Files is a big, also an RPG. You can play a Dresden yeah, Files true. RPG. And, and, and a board game I actually recently played. <laughs> yeah. God, the Dresden Files RPG, I read through some of the rules on it, and I was like, man, this deck is stacked against you at all times. There's yeah, like mean, no... That's how the books You're are, under-leveled really. You're for everything. <laughs> yeah. Which, I yeah, so I guess Harry Dresden's also under-leveled for everything he does. Uh, all right. So next, then, our next topic, uh, speaking of... Uh, being under leveled for things we'll talk about uh being being afraid of things and how how scary things are when we jump into the science of scare project uh, yeah so essentially this is something that it started back at what was it, like 2000 it's not that old uh pretty recent and uh 20 is 2020 when they first started making their list? Yeah, yeah, that's what I meant. I mean, yeah, 2020. <laughs> I'm old. 2000 is basically 2020. That's my reference. We're, we're in 2004 <laughs> yeah, right now. Like really yeah. <laughs> um, we graduated yeah, so this year, Bones. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, I'm older than both of you. <laughs> yeah, by a lot, Mister. Yeah, I was using fucking... LimeWire in Afghanistan. Like, I wasn't using it in country. I used it prior to. Still, though. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so initially they screened a bunch of movies and they just like measured people's heart rates, uh, and and so they used that to decide like the 50th scary movies, um, which like worked okay, but it, it, it kind of biases it towards like jump scares, right? Because you're measuring like your maximum heart rate. Obviously, uh, movies with lots of jump scares are probably going to increase that more. Uh, so recently, I think last year. Or maybe just this year, even uh, they added a heart rate variance into the calculation as well. Twenty 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 three. Yeah, so last year, uh, and so they kind of averaged the uh, resting heart rate, uh, the the highest, like the highest uh, spike, and then the variance, and they just give it a little score, uh, and they then have the top fifty scariest movies, and every year now. This is, you know, the second year that they've done that. But if you're in the top 25, if you get your movie in the top 25, it stays there uh, unless somebody else makes a movie that, like, would, you know, be past would it. Would bump you, yeah, bump yeah. you off the list. Uh, and then the, the bottom, like, 25, they get rescreened every year to see if they are still, you know, scary culturally. Uh, so, yeah, that's how that works. And, and for those of you wanting to know what the baseline is, the score is out of 100. Uh, and Shrek is three. So there Which, you go. Again, I'm still curious as to how Shrek got all the way up to three, unless someone sneezed or was just particularly aspirated. Somebody really liked, uh, my, uh, my, yeah, Michael Myers. <laughs> if that is name, Mike Myers. Mm-hmm. So it was the voice actor. Maybe that's why. Similar yeah. name. Yeah, they were still confused with yeah from the guy from Halloween. But yeah, uh, it scored a three. Yeah, the highest scoring. Uh, at, at a scare score of 96 is Sinister, which That's I don't know. That's a Jake Gyllenhaal movie, right? No, no. Uh, Sinister no. is uh, Ethan Hawke. Ethan Hawke? Yeah. I don't even know that one. You don't oh, know Ethan Hawke or you don't know the movie? No, I know Ethan Hawke. Oh, I was about to get a plane ticket to Canada to fight you. I was like, you need to watch Ethan Hawke movies. Isn't that the starship from the Star Wars game? Isn't, isn't that what? No, that's the Eberron Hawke. Or is that it? I don't remember. Sorry. I've never hated you more than I hate you right now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, same. I'm wor- I'm working <laughs> on it. <laughs> if I'm... there's more if there's more to go from where we're at now, you must be holding something in your pocket and it's the Ebon Hawk, by the way. See, I was close. It's close to Ethan Hawk. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> Sinister. <laughs> yeah, uh have, have either of y'all watched Sinister? I I would recommend it. It's a pretty good movie. I have not no. I again, not a not a huge horror watcher. I have watched a surprising number on their top 50 list, though, for not being it's, super into horror movies. It's a, it's a good list. Uh, so also one thing I do have to mention, too, um, that it is only English uh, language horror movies, which I do think precludes like a, ro- a lot of really scary uh, Ooh, movies. Japanese movies. Surprisingly yeah. large Japanese, amount of Korean, French horror French. movies, too. Yeah. Well, I mean, who's easier to scare than them? <laughs> hey. no, they they do some brutal movies, man. Like Margaret. Yeah, yeah they do. Fucking, oh, yeah, I yeah. There's 
there's some movies on the French cinema list that I'm like, nah, I'm, nah, I'm not, not into it, Doug. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah I, I mean, so out of the top ten, I've seen, I've bitten, seen three out of the top ten. Is Bitten on there? That that movie? I think it's that's what it's called. No. With, what's uh, his face? Oh man, John Cusack. It is not. Yeah, I don't even think it's in the top fifty, my friend. <laughs> yeah, it's not. Yeah, it's not even in the top. What about 50. Leprechaun? Definitely not in the top uh, fifty. Your favorite, your favorite horror movie ranks in at fifty. What's that? Scream. Scream. Oh yeah, um, it's your one. favorite. How do you not know what it is? Uh, I thought you were <laughs> fucking with me. I thought you were gonna oh, name some God. weird movie and be like, "That's your favorite." Uh, the Conjuring. My Little Pony, number fifty, <laughs> terrifying. <laughs> I mean, if you look at the science of it, <laughs> <laughs> the science behind plastic we, animals, we want to talk about cartoonified about, about the uh, the scare factor for fandoms. I think My Little Pony might be the scariest. Uh, yeah, I feel like Brony definitely chops them up <laughs> into a level of of utter horror in real life. Because again, reality is the scariest. You know, <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm sure sad is. that Ryan missed this one because uh, I was gonna. Talk to him about talk to me because that is number nine on the list, and he just recently watched. And it's his specific kind of terror in that it is all about uh, ghosts and possessions and stuff. I didn't find it really very scary at all. I thought it was like a, I thought it was a good movie. I enjoyed it, but I did not find it very terrifying. So I would want want to get his uh, thoughts about why it's so scary. Um, but yeah, James Wan is actually on there like four times, which I uh, I think that he is kind of a master of the jump scare. He did the Conjuring, Conjuring Two. Uh, both chock full of jump scares. Like, those are very yeah. jump scare heavy movies. And but they're like jump scare heavy and like appropriately used jump scares. Like they're not just like yeah, yeah. They they're actually purposeful, right? Like I think he does a very good job of making it not feel cheap. The I was, Doom I was movie. Looking, I was looking at this list, and there's not a whole lot of like I call it the blood horror movies. You know where it's all just like gore. Not a lot. On this list, yeah, is not, Doom not on there? Many. Doom is not no. a horror movie; it's an action movie. Uh, I'm nothing it was pretty on this scary. List that has the Rock? Yeah, it was yeah. pretty scary to me. <laughs> There's nothing on this list that has the Rock. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, maybe. Leave me alone. Uh, there's, so there's some one weird ones that... one on here that I haven't even heard of. Like, uh, Hereditary. Oh, you haven't heard of Hereditary? No. I, I feel like okay. I feel like Hereditary. I don't know. Uh, Obviously, they did the science, so apparently it is kind of scary. I feel like a lot of people don't feel like it's very scary, but there's like one part in the movie that, that like gets everybody. Um, I, I, it's definitely worth a watch. It's a good movie. I enjoy it as far as horror goes. Um, not seeing, not seeing Human Centipede on this list either. Yeah, thank God. Quality cinema on that one. <laughs> Honestly, I think South Park. I think South Park's Human Centipede was better than the actual Human Centipede. <laughs> I, I watched it. Right? I watched all three of them. They're all fucking terrible. I feel like that would that happened in a barracks somewhere, like on a Saturday night, I, and that's where I it came hope from. Not. Um, <laughs> only one Saw movie on this list. Yeah, only the first one, one was one. really. Which one's on yeah. the list? It's ten. The first ten. Oh, oh fuck. X. The only yeah. good yeah. one was the first one. That one yeah, was I, fucking just because you weren't used to it. I agree. I, I mean, and the first one had like phenomenal twist in it like it, yeah, it was yeah. a great i think it was a great movie and it wasn't like every every first subsequent saw, movie, saw after yeah the first saw movie wasn't numbers. wasn't that like brutal like there were some there were some brutal parts but it wasn't just yeah. like torture porn right like it was uh the psychological a good movie. horror yeah and then everyone after that is just like how can we kill people yeah, yeah like I, what I, weird challenge can we do the <laughs> I think once the the secret got out, like from the first one, like once you knew and everything like that, then they just gave up on being a good movie, and they were just like, "What kind of crazy shit can I do now?" Like I really think that's what happened because the first one is probably on my list, like right under Scream for like horror movies, like because it, it was just like oh. the acting was good, the story it was like so good, and man. to see like, the second it. one, it's like. So you were drunk when you wrote this. That's what I'm getting. Like you were just I, I know, you were they were drunk, like, We made so confused. much money with the first one. Let's do it again. <laughs> I, I think they were probably drunk when they wrote the first one, and then they like sobered up for the rest of them. Yeah, oh, like, that's, that's why. Something that's why happened. It's the outlier. Yeah, phenomenal first movie. Yeah, horror, did, especially. 
did the second did Quiet Place two outrank Quiet Place one? There's a uh, fucking good like the way Quiet Place started. I gotta say, dude, like it with the sure kid, did. yeah, Quiet dude, Place that kicked 2, me in the 17. dick right away. Quiet Place, the original twenty down there, twenty five. I do suspect. I mean, because Quiet Place came out longer ago, right? Like so, you just and also, uh, you know, uh, Krasinski got I. Uh, John Krasinski? John Krasinski, yeah. Yeah, yeah. who uh, obviously he, he did a great job. So I'm yeah. sure that he, he learned a lot from the first one and was able to, you know, to do better. Really apply that to, the, to yeah. the second one. And I do think that the second one, I, like the, I don't know, the first one holds a special place in my heart because it's like the, the unique story. It's a, it's a unique yes. monster, you know? So yeah. how do you get past that? But I do think that maybe the second one is like a little bit better, in my opinion. I would definitely die immediately in in that world. <laughs> like, I'm not even like like maybe yeah, I, 15 fucking seconds, dude. Like maybe. You, are you <laughs> I gotta say, so we talk about like horror movies and stuff at work and like different you know apocalyptic things. And uh, one guy in particular, his everyone was talking. He was like, "What would you do if the apocalypse hit?" And he was like, "I'm getting a six pack of beer. I'm sitting on my front lawn, and I'm just gonna watch it happen." And I was like. You know what? Good for you. Like everyone's talking about what they would do if like the purge was real or if this and that was real. Bucket was just like, I'm embracing it, baby. Like just cracking me a thirty rack and sitting on the front porch and just letting whatever happens happen. <laughs> you gotta have your purge list. Doesn't everybody have that? No. No. Oh, my bad. On I'm, to other you, topics. It's just you. No. After the no. after the faux pas with the Ebon Hawk, like you're the only thing on Bones and I's purge list. Like, yeah. <laughs> so uh, Roman Crow agreed with you that Hereditary is a messed up movie. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like there's a there's a scene that everybody that's seen it knows, and they're like, ah, it's fucked up. Um, dude, I think know. so many movies have that particular scene though. That's like with you forever. Like for me, I don't know if you guys call it a horror movie, but um, the one where the, like there's weird creatures in the mist, and it's got fucking the guy that played the Punisher in it, and he's the got mist. like sh- the mist. Was it called the mist? <laughs> yeah, it was just called. I the wasn't mist. sure. I couldn't remember. <laughs> just I haven't King seen it in years. I only watched it the one time because the ending to me was so good, traumatizing. Like I was psych- like, good psychological horror. Holy fuck! One. I could never watch it again because the ending to that movie was just so. Oh, it's it's traumatic. Like it's so yeah. Like, oh, the ending is rough. Oh, and the biggest yeah. thing is, I would have definitely done it to myself too. Like, I don't know why he stopped. Like, I would. It could have been anybody beating on my window. I'd yeah. been like, give yeah. me a minute. As soon as you step up, you realize what's going on. Like, it's either I'm doing it myself, or we're doing suicide by cop right here. Like, yeah, like, like yeah, something's like, going right. on. Like, like oh, I, man, I, yeah. I know harsh topic, folks. That is harsh. We're not making Sp- light of any situation. For those of you that haven't but, watched like, the mess, yeah. I guess is, that, that, yeah. is a, that, that is a, yeah, uh, a gut wrenching end to a movie. <laughs> I uh, that's kind of like my favorite kind of horror though, like where it's just so dreadful. Um, well, over over being like scared. Like there's a there's a Korean movie I really like called um, I Saw the Devil, which uh, yeah, it's like it's not even very scary, but like it's, it's first of all it's a very like who's the good guy kind of like do I am I, am I rooting for the bad guy right now kind of movie. Uh, makes you feel a certain kind of way, and in the ending, you're like, "God damn, that's not great." Like, I feel I don't want to watch this again. Yeah, there's some of those ones where it's like you get to the end of the film, and I'm like, "There's not like a winner," and there never, there never was gonna be. Um, the ones that give me the ones is when you finally start to pull for somebody, where you really start to like finally believe in a character after watching him struggle for a while, and then the ending hits and like nothing was good. I was like, oh gosh, like the mist being the perfect example of that. You really start to cheer for the guy, and then it gets to that scene at the end, and you're just like, well, I need a beer <laughs> and a shower. I was like, Jesus. Yeah. I was like, that is honestly like. Uh, like such a great story like i didn't really i didn't find the movie that great but like the story was good i think you could have went a different way with it um and not to change the ending you got to leave the ending that ending was so good but like the rest of the movie like i think there was some some ways you could have gone with it like that could have made it a bit better uh, lots of insidious on this list as well that i'm seeing their top 50 yeah it's like insidious red door insidious 2 the first insidious i've never watched any of them uh it's, I watched Insidious. It's good. Yeah, it was, uh, it's, it's horror. A lot. Yeah. They got a lot more jump scare heavy as it went on. Yeah, 
There's only uh, a couple found footage films. Uh, Blair Witch Project's on there. Fairly, fairly middle of the pack. I want to say somewhere in the 20s. Yeah, Hell House, Hell House LLC is found footage. That's a number 10. So that's the only one I think out of those that is in the top 10. Damn. And there is What's Paranormal, the one from Alaska? Alaska yeah. yeah. That would scare the shit out of me. So I was Hell like, House, I know it's LLC not real, but it might be. Is is a uh, I highly recommend uh, watching that one. It's super good. Um, no, it's about like, I I like one of these on this list. I'm highly curious about, and that's the autopsy of Jane Doe. Oh, dude, I love that movie. It's so good. So it's oh, like, you're gonna have to you're gonna have to tell me about it. It's it's only it's only like three characters in the movie. Really, it's um, about an autopsy like being performed on this girl who is un- unidentified, hence Jane Doe. Uh, and yeah, I can't really tell you any more other than that. Uh, it's two people doing the autopsy. Like one's like a, I want to say he's like an understudy or something. Eric. So Roman Crow mentions Babadook. Oh, Babadook. Um, Babadook is uh, also Babadook. on there. Yeah, also on the list at 16, the Babadook. He said he believed, or he or she, sorry, I don't know, um, inspired a lot of the Hereditary movie. Yeah, also, uh, also a good one. I enjoyed Babadook as well. Uh, I think the ending was a little bit let down for that one for me personally. There's but. okay. There's one. There's one name on this list that I'm not ever going to be able to take seriously, and it's it's ranked really high. But it's Skinnamarink. Skinnamarink. Dink is good though. Yeah, that's all I can think of is the little song like Skinnamarink. <laughs> like I, I don't know how I'm going to be able to take that serious. <laughs> okay. So what's more important with a movie, in your opinion? Especially, I think horror, this is much, this is very important. Like, is it a good movie, like uh, an average movie, solid ending, or a really good movie, shitty ending? Because I find horror movies fall into that a lot of times. It seems very difficult to get both to line up with horror movies. Because, like, action movies, it doesn't fucking matter half the time. Like it has a like Expendables doesn't even it, need to fucking story yeah. to shoot shit and it's good. It, it, so like horror is different. Need dial, it needs Expendables needs two things, actually three things. It needs established action stars, cheesy one-liners, and gunfights, and that's and, it. And that's and what I mean. None of them have to be good. No, it they just, just needs go those together. Three okay. things, and I and I love every one of them. If I just yeah. want to turn my brain off and enjoy a film. Yeah, I mean that, that is action as a general fucking as a genre that is action as a genre of action like it doesn't really matter uh, for the most part it doesn't have to have that many elements that are good to still be entertaining but that's what I say I would say action movies are entertaining are they yeah. good yeah. some die hard some of them but some that's of, what I'm saying some of them are so really like, good I, some of them are very good yeah, I John do Wick, find that horror first though John needs, Wick being very good I do uh, find so, horror though needs the story compared to anything else well, like so you there, need it quote from uh, Wes Craven when he asked like somebody asked him like why there's so many bad horror movies uh, being made, and he said that they were made. They are made by people who don't like horror. Interesting. Movies. Yeah, so I think that uh, I think that with horror movies, uh, the uh, for me personally, the ending is, is usually like a better indication of the movie, like how I feel by the end of the movie. Uh, right. You know, is like whether or not it was a good movie. Uh, if it has a good story, like it's definitely a good thing. Yeah, that's always, it, a, that's always a plus in any like, film okay. is if the story this, is good. The first Saw movie, the story was kind of weak, really, if you think about it. But, like, because of because of the act, because of the end of the movie, like, it was good. It, like, that's, like that's, that was a twist that I don't think, I don't think anybody, if anybody tells me they saw that coming, I think that they're a liar. I don't think anybody saw that coming. <laughs> okay, so for, for James, uh, you're muted, Travis. But for There's James... Some... Absolutely. Some movies, yeah, I'm gonna have to go with James. I think ending's the most important part of it because the ending is what ties the story together, right? That's where you get all of these little pieces that finally link up into your final deal. So, like, they may feel separate as you're watching it, like these unrelated aspects that finally come down into one, like, conclusive ending uh, or cliffhanger ending. But again, everything gets wrapped up at the end. There's no like dangling threads. So yeah, ending is definitely to me way more important than just having a great story from start to finish and then botching the the end. Because then you end up with like M. Night Shyamalan movies where you have one really good one really yeah, I, good ending and then a bunch of really weird, yeah, uncomfortable I mean, endings. 
Uh, His movies are always uh, Sixth Sense. Like that is that's a. I mean, that's a horror movie. I would say it's a horror. That's movie. a horror movie for sure. Uh, at least it's like uh, a yeah. thriller or something. But I kind of, I kind of, I, I kind of jump, jumble like psychological thrillers into horror also because a little bit. Yes, yeah. I feel like it falls into the same niche because I mean, again, with that one, he's dealing with. The the people with mental instability. He's he's talking to the dead. Uh, he's dealing with someone who's a like like a psychopath. Like at the beginning, is a killer. So yeah, I mean, that was such a good movie. I don't, know, I don't know what happened. Yeah, so uh, to old Shamalama Ding Dong there after that. <laughs> Shamba Bamba Lamba Bam. <laughs> uh, yeah, I watched uh, M. Night old Shyamalan's or the beach. What was it called? Old. I think it's called Old or, or the Beach or something. I don't know. So stupid. And the and the and the, the twist was like water. I don't know. It was terrible. Do you think it's because Wait. he tried to out be out quirky each movie? Like each movie wanted to be quirkier, and he just I could think do he it. Wanted like to make each movie more twisty than Sixth Sense. He was like, "Now there's the big twist," uh, and that became the whole thing. Well, what was the uh, other movie that was a big twist that he had? Signs. That came out? Not signs. Um, the one where they're in like the village or whatever. The village. The village. Was it actually <laughs> called the village? Yeah. Two in movies. a row. That movie about the mist. Do you mean the mist? <laughs> <laughs> but what, movie about the village. Do you mean the village? <laughs> I didn't know it was called that. Like where they're actually like in the like new agey stuff. If they they're go like, like literally in the, in the woods. <laughs> Isn't that what it was though? Like they were really yeah, like, yeah, they were, like, like in a park. Spoiler yeah. alert: They were in a park. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're they're a cult. Like they're a cult if they were in a park. Like, but they didn't realize they were a cult though. That was the whole thing. Uh, the higher ups did. Yeah. Well they yeah, of course like, they, they did. Do. It's usually yeah. how it works. The people that make the Kool Aid, not the people that drink it. I mean I, I, would you put, I, I would you say put that those I, in as as horror movies, like The Village and Lady in the Water and stuff? Yeah, I, I would say so. I would it's not good. there's not good horror movies. Like, yeah, yeah. Whoa, back, whoa. To the, back to the West Craven comment. <laughs> yeah. The the village wasn't horrible. Yeah, it was I was not, a little it, scared. It was not good. It was not. It was not good. My 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 wife doesn't like horror movies uh, because she's scared pretty easily. She thought that the village was stupid. She doesn't she even also remember. Watched it. the village. I, I, like, it's pretty lame. Like, I, I think I asked her about it. She's like, I, I don't. I don't remember. So <laughs> well, did we I feel that? special now. Yeah, but that's, that's one thing too. Like horror is very very subjective. Like uh, so that's why yeah. I do like the science of scare because they do have at least some metrics for being scared. Yeah, but, they have like, something that they're physically measuring. Yeah, your enjoyment of horror movies is very subjective. Like a lot of people, I'm mad the Deliverance is not on this list. Yeah, I wonder if it was counted as a horror movie. I mean, I would say it is for sure. Personally, I feel yeah, like it uh, should be if it's if it's not. It'd be interesting, uh, like what they kept off that list. Then, if you could find out, like some mainstay, because they might not think that certain like thrillers are horror, just because they fall, they might not fall into. The horror aspect, of, even though we call them that. A lot of classics, too, on this top 50 list. Yeah, I wouldn't say a lot. There's a, there's a few. Uh, Halloween, Nightmare on M Street, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. All in movies. Yeah, and, I mean, those are all... Those have eyes? So, I mean, those are really the only, like, those are those three in particular, are, like, the only, like, uh, Exorcist. So four. Wasn't, wasn't 28 Days Later, wasn't that? <gasps> no, 28 Days was... 28 Days oh. Later was, like, uh, early 2000s or something like that. Right, but that was that was a follow up to another movie, wasn't it? No, there's 28 weeks later, was the follow up. 28 weeks later, and now we're having another one coming out soon. It's like 28, 20 years. years. Yeah. Which I'm I'm excited for. That. I thought the way they did zombies was pretty cool in that one. I oh, have yeah, to I, say. I love it. I love it. Okay, so here's the next question. What's everybody's favorite zombies? Mine is 28 days later. The way they did zombies, I thought was amazing. I feel Shaun like of the I, Dead. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Shaun of the Dead. That's only because you could survive that. Let's let's be totally honest. So uh, that one's a, survivable. There's a Taiwanese horror movie. Oh called, Jesus! Called The Sadness <laughs> from 2021. Yeah. It is. Uh, I've actually heard of that one. It's kind of technically zombies, but it's not really. It's like uh, they're still people. Uh, and it just makes people excessively violent, and that is my favorite take on the classic like like zombie trope. I liked, I really did like the way like as far as like traditional zombie movies go. I got to put mine at, at World War Z, where it made them pretty I, fairly similar to Twenty Eight Days Later, where it was just like this rage inducing, but it also made them like like 
faster. They were uncaring about their own like damage that they dealt to themselves, so they were willing to just throw themselves at fortifications and stuff, which to me is that reckless abandon where they don't like there's only the drive to consume, you know, uh, makes them way scarier than like the walking dead zombies. I, there was nothing ever scary about those. Cause they always just sort of shuffled. And I'm like, how have they caught up to you so many times with these people moving at half the speed of smell? Well, the reason they were so scary for that is if you died, you just turned into one, no matter how you died. Like you didn't I mean, need to get bitten. World War Z. I thought you had to get bitten in world War Z. Okay. So, it's been a long time since I watched and or read. I, I don't I'm have an input pretty, on that one. I'm pretty sure on World War Z you didn't have to get bitten. I honestly, I can't remember. Yeah. I, I didn't think you did. I thought honestly, I thought that the only one that ever took that route was The Walking Dead. I uh, I do love zombies. Like that's probably one of my favorite horror subgenres, like zombie movies. There's um there's one called uh, Dead Snow, which is about Nazi zombies. <laughs> what? <laughs> Highly recommend. It's so stupid, but it's great. Like it's stupid. There's in the some best of the zombie way. films that are like just awful that that want to be a serious horror movie, but then end up being a comedy I inadvertently. <laughs> I don't think that that one was like being serious. I think I'm pretty sure that like from the get go they were like, "This is so stupid. We're making the great. Like, let's just ever. make this dumb." <laughs> yeah. Good to know. Uh, Good, good, good watch. I, I would recommend that one for sure. Uh, so, Eric, you, as somebody not so versed in in horror, what makes a good horror movie for you? Oh, it's the ending, like just tying it together, like it is. Like you're all correct. Like, like I said in the beginning, like action movies don't need a story. Um, a lot of drama. It doesn't. It's nice when it ties it together at the end, but it's just, I don't know. It's not as, you need, drama has to have a good story the whole way through. Like, anytime you look at any other genre, horror is the only one where you can have one or the other, and it's great. Um, You don't need to have both. It's nice. You want both. Like, of course, I want everything. But, like, you have, you have to have the ending. Because if the ending is shitty, like, say what you want about Scream. The ending to Scream was just awesome. Um. Like the, I don't, I don't know if anybody caught on to that ahead of time. Like if you watch it again after, you see some little cues throughout yeah. the movie where like the two of them are looking at each other and shit like that. Like because I watched it the other day and I'm like, how did I not see this the first time? But like the yeah. ending to it did it, or like the mist and things like that. So I think horror is the one genre where you can't have a bad ending. You just you can't have a bad ending, and it has to be just changing. What was, by the way, real quick, what was that zombie movie? That I wanted. Oh. You want me to watch? I gotta write it down. The the sad. Which one? Uh, sadness. Sad, no, the sadness. The yeah. Taiwanese one. Yeah. The sadness or sad. I think it's just called sadness. It is. Uh, it's also very brutal. Oh, it's good. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. So a- ending. Ending for a horror movie. If, if it has a bad ending to me, it's just it's shitty. I don't care how good the story is. If the ending is not like if there's no twist. If there's no. It's just like ah, oh, they caught him at the end. Scooby Doo. It doesn't even need to have a twist. Like, honestly, it can come to a logical conclusion at the end, but it, it, at the same time, if it doesn't make sense the way it ends, or is just a bad ending, like poorly done ending, it ruins the whole movie. Uh, and it's that way with a lot of films for me, where, like, I remember watching it and be very, like, fulfilled and engaged, and then I get to the ending and I'm like, this is terrible. Because I have a whole stack of books that I could mention that have terrible endings, but really good build-up. Uh, I don't know, Roman Crow. Uh, you're if you, if you're maybe thinking about Train to Busan, which is a like a really uh, phenomenal Korean zombie movie. Uh, also, I would recommend to watch as well. Uh, it was on Netflix, I think, for a while. I don't know if it still is, but that one also has a a really like kind of heart wrenching ending. Uh, and it's also got like fast, scary zombies, so it's pretty good. Yeah, slow shuffling zombies just don't frighten me, man. They don't do it for me. Shot of like, the Dead. <laughs> fantastic film, by the way. In yeah. case you guys want to laugh, Shaun dude. Shot of the Dead is so good. Um, I mean, honestly, most of those films with those two guys have been spectacular, in my opinion. They're very good. That's a they're a horror comedy. I freaking I, I love movies like Shaun of the Dead. Uh, with Dale and Tucker versus Evil, Zombie uh, Land, stuff like that. Again, Zombie Zombie Land one, I like. All right, Zombie Land two, just not it, man. Just not yeah. it. Um, 
Cabin in the Woods, I I kind of think that uh, that's a horror. I consider that a horror comedy. I think it's great. The, the Evil Dead. The Evil swallow Dead. Yeah. Let's swallow your soul. Let's swallow your soul. Let's swallow your soul. But you know, you can see the hand move in the mouth. Uh, <laughs> there's a 2013 Evil Dead. Yeah, I think it was 2013. It's like straight up horror, and I really enjoyed it as well. And then there's another one, uh, Evil Dead Rise, just 2022, I think. Yeah, that's that's on the list of scariest yep. films. Like they they turned good. that franchise around from where it started. <laughs> um, if you guys want a horror comedy series or like a horror action series, Ash vs. Evil Dead, very good. Oh, the, the TV series, yeah. Yeah, I'm very good. good. I know. Well, Bruce Campbell is just making classic after classic, in my opinion. He's the best like B-horror actor or B-action actor yeah. ever. He's so phenomenal in all of his roles, even his TV show roles. Uh, what was the one he did about the spy? Burn, uh, Burn, 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 Burn Notice. Notice. Yeah, his character Burn oh, Notice is also spectacular. I love that show. But too. we're we're <laughs> running a little long. Got a little all over the place here at the end. So yeah, so check out the science of scare, um, and check out some of the movies on this list. Like I said, I was surprised at how many I've actually seen on this list for not being a big horror aficionado. Stand, stand against evil. evil. <laughs> yeah. Stand, stand against evil. Um, but yeah, so make sure everybody YouTube, uh, subscribe, follow, like YouTube, fucking TikTok, Twitter, fucking Instagram, Instagram. Wherever you see it. Yeah. yeah I've, wherever I've you got come a... across crossing the nerd verse, we're all yeah. over the place. And our LinkedIn trees fucking everywhere too. Um, the One... merch is pretty good. One last shout out, repping your boy, LA Knight. Gotta We're sure really trying to up. get him on here. We want him to be our second celebrity because I want Nathan Fillion to be our first. Okay, I've actually go. messaged him with our Instagram account. <laughs> I, ta- I ta- yet ta- to hear every, a response. Every, every time I wear an LA Knight shirt and do anything even remotely <laughs> that involves wrestling on this podcast, I tag LA Knight. <laughs> He's going to get us there. Also, Simon Miller, uh, just give you a shout out too because you're my favorite wrestling news host ever. Because he likes things that make him feel warm and fuzzy in his tum tum, and that's probably one of the best sayings I've ever heard. Oh, a movie hey, we didn't think of. Actually, Event yeah. Horizon. Oh. I got, I got a uh, call out to that. We can, we can talk about this again when we talk about uh, Warhammer. But I believe that Event Horizon takes place in the Warhammer universe. Uh, I would, yeah, I, I believe that. Oh shit! I'm gonna have to rewatch that movie now. I think that that's the warp that they go into. Yeah, that that tracks. That really does track. Also, Damn. speaking of horror movies that didn't make this list, uh, 2000 A Space Odyssey, I feel like. Oh, man, definitely should fall into I the horror. Love how. I love how you're on the robot side. He was like, yeah, the robot was right. Yeah, fuck the people. <laughs> just totally right. like, eject him. Like, fuck them. <laughs> can't let you do that. Dude. I mean, you know, <laughs> it's how it works. Um, I so like, I welcome our new robot overlords. <laughs> like, I'm on board. <laughs> I'm just saying that because well, we're on the internet. Uh, if we talk in person, we have a different, <laughs> yeah. different opinion. Have you ever talked to your to your Alexa and stuff in like nice ways? I uh, actually I thank my Alexa, or not my Alexa, my Google. Yeah, I thank it all the time when it does stuff for me. I'm always like, and thank you. Same with Siri. I'm like, and thank you. So when they take over the world, I'm like, make sure we're still friends. Um, <laughs> but with that, of course, um, we're Travis will do the ending, but click everything, do all yep. the things, check out the merch. Um, and then next week we won't have an episode because, well, it's fucking Halloween. I'm taking my kids out. Yeah. Um, and I'm sure these That's gentlemen fair. got stuff to do. Um, we'll be back the week after that, though, but we'll, we'll keep throwing shorts out and things like that. I had a sloppy week. I know. Don't kill me, people. Um, but we'll I, keep no, it coming we're, out. We're coming a la the purge because of the Ebenhawk faux pas. I just want you to know <laughs> that you're never going to be forgiven for that ever. The second greatest ever. Star Trek or Star Wars ship. Oh, Star my Trek. God. Jesus. <laughs> and, and now that we've infuriated every fandom that we know in 10 seconds or less let's bring this episode to a close before he speaks again we have been crossing the nerdverse thanks for joining us we'll catch you next time i sorry <laughs>